Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan, also known as the Medieval Genie, and today we're going to be talking about the purpose of swords. Now, some smart acts can go, ah, they're weapons. Yes, but weapons were invented before swords. So, for example, I've got tone, you know, I've got nail clippers, so you don't need to invent the ultimate, you know, mega nail clipping tool because you've got it done. I've got nail clippers. If someone offered me something else, I'd say, I've got it. I don't need anything new. So there's a specific set of reasons why the swords were invented. Because there were weapons invented long before swords. So it's one of those things where there's clearly a market, a demand for this kind of item that other weapons don't fulfil. So let's look at the other sorts of weapons it was in competition with. Now clearly, it loses at the range game because you've got items like crossbows, bows, javelins, slings, and all sorts of other items which can act as projectile weapons and really beat it at distance. So it can't be that. If you need to stab something, obviously, something like a knife or dagger is going to do the trick really nicely. Far better than trying to awkwardly angle around with some long blade. I can just go up to someone, no, that's that done. Ah, but what about getting a bit of distance with someone? Not quite like a projectile weapon, but further away than something like a knife or dagger. Well, you know what, we've got spears, and they were some of the earliest weapons ever invented. So if I want to stab someone repeatedly and not just have to reload, but I want to do it many times from a distance, well, I mean, I can reach quite a long way with a spear. You can have them all the way from about four foot tall, usually up to many feet. Uh, I can't remember exactly how much, but you can get pike lengths that reach a massive distance as far as close combat weapons go. Sort of stretching the idea of close combat a fair bit. So, obviously, I don't need to worry about that when it comes to having a sword. Ah, but what about hitting people? You can't hit someone with a spear. You can't hit someone parred with a dagger or a crossbow. Well, you've got things like maces, clubs, warhammers, pole axes, and other such items which can really deliver a massive heft. And things like this concentrate the force at the end. So if I've got someone wearing a helmet, for example, and I want to hit them so hard that they're injured underneath the helmet, guess what? Smack! This is going to do the job perfectly well and better than any sword can. So then we'd look at perhaps chopping something. So you don't want to have blunt impact. Maybe you've got someone who's wearing padded armour, you know, some sort of thick quilting. So in that case, hitting them isn't quite as effective. Maybe something of sharpness can work. But then, of course, we've got these. Hatchets, axes and other such items, which, again, concentrate the force. But they've got a good bit of sharpness, and so I can chop and cut through things as I see fit. So then, this can do it better than a sword can in most cases, because rather than spreading the force along the length, I can just focus it on this axe head and go BANG! and just chop right through. So it can't be that then. So, with a sword, I consider it to be almost like the Swiss Army knife of things like close combat weapons. So, of course, it has the ability to stab, in the same sense as a dagger. But, of course, it's longer. It's not quite as easy to manipulate around. I'm moving my arm quite a bit. And even if I do a technique known as half-swording, I still have a bit of a bar in the way. I can manipulate much more easily and, you know, get around for a stab, or perhaps into things like the armpits and all that stuff quite well, but not as well as I could do with something like a dagger. It also chops, so I can treat it to cut. And of course, it doesn't do so as well as a hatchet does, or a proper war axe, but it certainly serves the trick very nicely. On top of that, it has, in many cases, a fair bit of range. Now this varies. You can have short swords, which obviously are going to reach much more closer to something like a dagger than something like a spear. But you can also get things like long swords 
and things in two hands, most notably things like the Zweihander, Montante, Spadoni, as we call it these days, and those classifications are given to larger two-handed weapons, which are treated more like pole arms, and that takes it a bit closer to something like a spear, but you'll never reach the scale of a pole arm. So you can still get that range on a lesser scale. But on top of that, there are things that you can do which are very unique to the sword. So you've got the cross guard. That's one thing that you don't see immediately invented on a sword, but it is something that you see quite useful nonetheless. Now, with things like a basket hilt, which was later when you're looking at things like the Napoleonic period, or even the earlier basket hilts like in Renaissance with the mortuary sword, for example, or the Schiavona, those things actually protected your hand. And if you've ever done things like historical European martial arts or reenactment and things, you notice that people tend to do a lot of protecting of their hands and forearms. And that's because if you're swinging or you're thrusting out, as you can see, the arm and the hand are quite far forward. And although it's all well and good just swinging about, you know, if you're doing test cutting or something, go chop slice and dice and all of that freely, but when an opponent's fighting back there's a nasty habit that when you're putting that arm forward they say no and then they chop right into it, perhaps chopping it off. Not desirable. So having something like a basket hilt or even something like a simple cross guard will do the trick very nicely to help prevent that from happening. You can for example give what's called a single time riposte or single time counter where instead of just defending, perhaps putting your hatchet or something in the way and blocking and then separately doing a counter, you can actually position a sword in a way that it does the parry while also doing the attack. So let's say someone does a diagonal cut, so they're going like that and they're aiming to chop me here. So of course I could block that, I could attack but then get hit still, or with a single time defence I can go, haha! So I can go from something like Fiore's window and using the cross or something like a basket hilt, protect myself while attacking. Now normally the only way that is possible is with a shield, which is why it's quite noteworthy that when you look later on, as you look at things like firearms being invented and taking precedent, the more that people are expected to have a sword on its own rather than in conjunction of a shield, the more you see increased hand protection, ranging from the medieval period where maybe someone might carry it as a sort of a sidearm, and maybe, let's say, a civilian who's not going to be going to his normal business every day carrying a big shield, because it, it gets in the way, you can't do a lot of things while your arm's taken up. Just wear your sword by your side, and then when you need to, haha, I've got something that attacks and defends really nicely. Additionally, having mechanical features like a cross guard can be quite overlooked in terms of its possibilities and offense. Now, I'll need to do this in a future video where I'll have a partner to demonstrate this on, but you can, for example, do half swording and things I mentioned earlier. So you can manipulate using a point. So let's say someone's attacking, I could defend and be able to angle in with a thrust, which is much more controlled, so I'm still blocking, I'm keeping a weapon, whatever it is, around there, and then manipulating around for the thrust, not quite at the same time as defending, but fairly close at least. And additionally, if I wish to go around, let's say I wish to attack their offside, I could parry, I can go around using equivalence, which stops my hand from getting cut and also adds a bar for manipulation. Hook around and then cut. And this can be done, let's say you do a guard of St George, which you do in military sabre, or British military sabre, going up. And you can do the same kind of thing again, hook and then just drive it for the cut. If you're doing something like arming sword or something of two edges, which is another feature that you see on some swords, you can actually have the ability to riposte with the back edge. 
So rather than having to go powery and then try and angle it so that that front part is hitting like you'd need to do with an axe or something similar that's got one edge, I could do the powery and then use the back edge to smack them. So that's another feature that you tend to see only on swords. If you tried to do that with something like a hatchet, like a double bitted axe, you'd end up having to add a lot more weight onto it and it could potentially cause problems. Also the fact that it would be protruding quite a bit backwards so you could hook yourself badly or other things. It doesn't seem to be something you see much in history so it seems like it was a fairly bad idea. Now on a similar note, obviously a lot of swords have pommels. Now this can additionally add some features. So one very simple example is I mentioned you can use something like a hammer or a mace to hit. Now if someone's wearing armour and I try to cut them with a sword, you've got the force and the weight spread along this length. You've got focusing the force which is trying to cut. So if I try to chop into steel plate, grr, yes there is some percussive force and I might get something done but for the most part it's just trying to bite into the armour and it might make a little bit of a dent, scratch, something, but it won't really have a significant effect. However, you can always hold the sword upside down and quite uniquely, because you've got a pommel, you now have a mace on your multi-tool. Again, we're back to the Swiss Army knife analogy. You've got a blade that cuts, you've got a blade that stabs, you've got a mace, you've got hooks and things for defending, like you've got yourself an extra shield, and you've got other features as well, like the fact that you can cut closer to the handle. So let's say I ended up closer to someone. With something like an axe, I might end up hooking around and then maybe I could pull on them. I could do more sort of grappling actions, which is all well and good. We've got that cupboard of the cross guard I mentioned earlier. But let's say I've gone around and I've ended up too close to my opponent. Now normally, this would be a bad thing because my blade is supposed to be over here and I kind of want to back off and then chop at them. Not with a sword. With a sword, I've gone around, I can place it on somewhere that's exposed. Let's say they're wearing a helmet and a breastplate, but their neck is exposed. Gently place on neck, slice. Not something you can do with most other weapons. So it's another versatile usage of the sword. On top of that, compared to larger weapons, it's a great sidearm. Like I said, so wear that. I've got something I can carry all day. Now if I had something like an axe or a mace, those things tend to be quite bulky and it's going to get in the way, you know, let's say I'm trying to use tools in my everyday job and there's this, there's this lump on my belt and it's kind of getting in the way and it's really awkward and I'm thinking maybe I should have left it at home but what if some bandits are attacking me? Ugh. With a sword it's a lot more sleek. Obviously nothing in life is perfect and you'll still have something that gets a bit in the way but for the most part you can be doing whatever it is and it doesn't get too much in the way. And that's why you do see some examples like the longer versions of the Seax or the Cinquedea which, you know, they might be worn perhaps on the back, on the side, you know, your sides you can draw out might be done in a similar style to the Gladius where it's more kind of drawing up and out. Whichever way you're doing it, the fact is it's a nice portable weapon that you can carry around with you, which of course is bigger than carrying something like a dagger or a knife, even though you might want to carry a knife with you as well for general purposes. I wouldn't want to cut my vegetables with a sword. Not so good for the carrots. Great for people, not good for carrots. But uh, as far as weapons go, like I said, this is, in my opinion, it's the multi-tool. It's one of those situations where you want a lot of features, but rather than trying to go all kind of RPG video game style and carrying about nine different weapons on you, which real life people can't do, I've got it all in one. Perfect solution to that kind of problem. So that's my opinion. Tell me what you think about the purposes of swords beyond that, and have a good day. See you in the next video.